Hi Scorpio! Welcome to your November 2017 love reading. It's Raina here and I am test driving my new Crystal Visions. I think it's called Visions or Crystal Vision. Yeah, Visions. Um, tarot cards. I'm trying to get them all facing the same direction. They're kind of uh, trying to figure out why they're Hmm. Okay. I got it. I'll show you the box. And you're going to be the first one, so. So the person is Jennifer Galasso, I guess. And for the men watching this, please do not feel excluded. These seem to be kind of feminine oriented, you know, a lot of female imagery. If I would have known that, I might have thought twice about getting it because I want to be inclusive, but, you know, it is what it is. It's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll make it through. And I think that it's fun to, to change. So I'm going to see how I connect to these cards and see if um, they really feel so far so good. So I'm feeling some nice um, possibilities with these. I was just looking at them. Really neat. I like the back. Here's this is what the back looks like. It's pretty cool. So, okay. We shall begin. Just shuffling them. Maybe I'll put some Whoa. Well, you can get... <laughs> okay. These will be three spiritual higher message cards. Interesting. They all flipped out, so I have to include them. And put this down here. Okay. So, the heart of the matter for you in November, the Ace of Wands, a new situation presenting itself. And it's funny, um, when I saw this card initially, because I haven't really seen every card, and I was like, what in the heck is that, you know, creature? Is that supposed to be... That looks like a, a lizard or something. And then, but now I'm noticing the 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 gem and you see that there's this kind of uh, reddish glow in the background and actually the wands connect with the fire signs so it is this kind of red hot feeling that the ace of wands represents which is of some new proposition some new situation and in love it's going to be possibly a new relationship but sometimes it can be like a new affair uh, the throes of passion physical passion or maybe a relationship with somebody who is a fire sign and that would be Aries Leo Sagittarius especially Leo for Scorpio people that always seems to be because you're both fixed signs and it's the, the tension of that square tends to, you know, be almost like a magnet. Um, the other thing that I want to say about this that, that I'm noticing now is it looks like the Kundalini. If you think about, they always show the Kundalini as the, the what do you call it, the, um, the snake around the, the spine is the, the rod in this particular depiction and the symbolism for the the symbol for the American Medical Association is that same symbol and the Kundalini arising is all about uh, it's connected sometimes to sexual energy but it it's really this spiritual um, awakening and so whatever is happening 
It could be something very potent, very exciting for you and new because that's what aces are all about. So let's just keep going and see if we can figure this out through the rest of the cards. In the past position, we have the star card. So this is a card of feeling like hope has been restored, healing. And when I see this card, I always think about the person maybe having gone through a lot of grief or just challenges, and now they're feeling so much more positive about their lives. You know, the healing that this card represents. Now, this card is also associated with Aquarius. So if there's an Aquarius in your past, that might be featured. Maybe that is your ex-partner, and now you're with somebody who's a, a Leo. Or I, I said Leo, but it doesn't have to be some some other person. And it doesn't have to be a fire sign. I was just saying that uh, to, to cover all the bases, since this is a general reading. So, yeah. And it's like some of you may have felt like this is, you know, I'm never going to fall in love again. I'm never going to find anyone that I feel as good with as I did with such and such person. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know. And um, for the current card we have the, or position, we have the judgment card. The judgment card, now she's playing that horn, um, is really about the chickens coming home to roost. So cause and effect. And it's, it sounds ominous, but it's only ominous if you have not been living life in a, an honorable way. If you've been doing the right thing, then there is no real judgment. And I, to be honest with you, I think a lot of judgment is self-imposed, is that we are the ones that judge ourselves, not God, not anyone but ourselves in that moment, whenever that moment comes, whether you're talking about after this lifetime or what, I think that we judge ourselves and we are our harshest critics. Because we know when we did not do what we should have done. And it's, it's really not about judging ourselves. It's about learning from our mistakes more than anything. And so whatever's going on right now, um, if you have met somebody new, this may be just cause and effect. If you're like in a current marriage or relationship and you've met somebody and you feel guilty about it, obviously, even if your part, your current partner is not treating you properly, it's always honorable to, to be straight with that person and not go behind their back. But if you just feel guilty because you want to get divorced, for instance, or something like that, you have to look at it from a um, bigger perspective, a wider perspective. And that perspective is, how were you treated? And if you were treated badly, but you still feel guilty about leaving a certain person, you have to understand that there's cause and effect in the universe. And it's not about punishment or revenge. It's about people understanding that they can't treat others in a certain way and get away with it. In other words, they have to face the music themselves. And if, you know, there's cause and effect. You do this, this happens. And there's no malicious intent involved. Not, you know, maybe there are for some people, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you've been honorable and somebody else hasn't, then that may be talking about you trying to, um, maybe you're getting divorced and that's the judgment of the divorce and it's going to free you. It's going to release you from an unhappy union. But the Ace of Wands is showing that you have a lot going on for you at the moment on your side. Maybe you're not in an actual relationship. Maybe you're just starting a new life. And that's what that card represents. It's possible as well. Uh, 
Okay, let's look at the higher message. Now, I did get these three cards all together, so I'm going to um, look at them. <clears throat> the Wheel of Fortune. Wow. Okay, I totally know what this is, Scorpio. Do you? The Wheel of Fortune connects to Jupiter, and Jupiter has gone into Scorpio. So it's like giving you this message, the spiritual message, that this may be your year, um, Scorpio. Maybe, um, you th maybe you're starting your solar return with a divorce, but on the other hand, or, or some kind of like um, ending, but on the other hand, you have a new beginning, and it's really good. The moon card as a higher message. This could also be like um, talking about timing. So you're going to have a new moon on the 18th of November, so that could be a new beginning for some of you, or all of you, actually. The other thing, too, about the moon card is it is connected to Pisces and it has a connotation of sometimes of confusion or de self-deception and <laughs> oh my god I, I when I started this reading it was perfectly quiet so that the the moon card could be saying you know you may have not looked at the truth of a situation and that is why it happened and that you have to see the red flags you can't lie to yourself when you're in that process you have to at the very beginning of a relationship you have to see what's there and not pretend that it's otherwise not lie to yourself selves um, Scorpio is a very perceptive sign, you know, not only um, being psychic, being a water sign, but also being a sign that can see right through people. But I'm always amazed at how many Scorpio people seem to really have those relationship issues where they believe somebody who ends up deceiving them because a lot of you may be kind of paranoid and maybe, uh, uh, you know, a little bit too suspicious but that's that might be that law of attraction working where where uh, if you think that somebody's going to cheat then it shows up for you so I know it's like it's not like you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't it's like how do how do I reconcile these two facts well it's it's about not being being um, not lying to yourself, but at the same time, choosing wisely and and being very aware of of what is happening, not getting carried away. So it's possible that you some of you fall in love, and it's not really even based on the the usual things. It may just be based on a feeling. Maybe you sense that you have this history with this person, and then once you've committed yourself, your heart to them, you have a hard time disengaging. I don't know. But then you also have the sun card. So you have the moon and the sun. And the sun is about, you know, th we could say that's the shadow side of you. And this is the light. The shadow side of Scorpio is that sense of distrust. I never know, is it mistrust? or distrust, or both. I, I, I'm like, you know, I have a minor in linguistics, and I still can't figure that one out. But that um, overly suspicious nature, the lack of trust, the sometimes uh, testing behaviors of, of, of testing that person, maybe not sh uh, sharing your emotions with other people, maybe kind of keeping them inside so that you can gain the upper hand and then the 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 sun side of the light side of Scorpio is being very devoted being very high-minded when you want to be when you really are 
at your best. And um, and being able to, yeah, when I say lo uh, devoted, I'm talking about loyal, but also the ability to love deeply and to not be superficial in any of your dealings, to be very, in, you know, they like say intense, but it's really having gravitas, having some kind of substance to you, not being shallow, you know. So you have that capacity, and it's like a battle of the of the dark and the light, you know. And you have to, and you have to really reconcile those two parts of yourself. Maybe more than most people, the dark and the light. And uh, you're not afraid of the dark. A Scorpio person is not afraid of it, but they may shy away from sharing of themselves because they want that sense of having the upper hand so the other person doesn't know that they are indeed vulnerable, that they're not totally always feeling you know, strong and, and confident. And the more you can see vulnerability as a strength, Scorpio, the better off I think you'll be. What is coming in is represented by the Nine of Swords. So this can be feelings of anxiety. It's so funny that this depiction of the Nine of Swords is so peaceful. It doesn't, it doesn't really go along with all these other depictions of it. Um, but what I would say, because this is, you see she's sleeping. And it's supposed to relate to insomnia and therefore anxiety. And kind of like the swords represent the, the, the communications, the thoughts that we have and things like that. And so with the nine of swords, we're looking at something that is connected to the number nine is about delving deep and, and being, and, and the spiritual too. So why would it be anything related to insomnia? Well, probably because a lot of times when we're dealing with our normal life, we don't necessarily deal with those kinds of deep issues. So we kind of shove them aside. And then at nighttime, that's when things are less active. And that's when the mind starts to go over time. And it doesn't have the same distractions it does during the day. So in terms of this reading, um, this could connect to, like I said, maybe that Aquarius. Or, you know, if you were involved with an Aquarius, a Libra, or a Gemini. But I... I'm saying Aquarius because I got the star card in the past position. But it could be that you still have this person on your mind. And perhaps this person is still in the picture. Whether it's a spouse, whether it's the person that you have just met, that you are uh, grappling with leaving. I mean, um, with you're grappling with going off with this person and leaving your current relationship. I don't know. But it's interesting that the outcome is the two of wands. And this the number two is always kind of like, can be choice. Now again with these creatures, <laughs> I'm going to have to read up on why they're depicting it with these, <laughs> these, I don't know what the heck that is. But actually this is a card of deciding whether or not to stay or go. So it could be that you're trying to decide whether or not to stay in a marriage, but also even relocate your living situation. But usually in a love reading, when I see the, the two, I think that you're making a choice between two people. And... The thing about the Two of Wands is it's all about what in, gives you enthusiasm. So with a Scorpio person being a water sign, you are emotionally based. And I don't think that anything practical will ever fully be enough to capture your um, sense of what you're going to do with a certain love relationship. In other words, 
If I had gotten pentacles in this reading, I didn't get one pentacle, then it might be that you're looking at, at life from a practical angle. But in general, I think of Scorpio as driven by their passions. And so because of, of this, I feel like you're never going to settle for a safe situation that is financially lucrative, that the person is just like dependable, but you don't really love them. You're always going to go after something that's dramatic and that is quite frankly intense because you live your life that way. You live your life on the edge and you probably wouldn't have it any other way. Not that you never marry earth signs like Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn, but it's very easy for you to find yourself attracted to someone who may be different than you, but they kind of spark that sense of, uh, if not danger, unpredictability. And that's what an Aquarius person would do for you if that is the person that you, that you have um, met or was with in the past. That kind of like not knowing what they're going to do next. So anyway, it's a very interesting situation. It's certainly not something that I have resolved at the end, but that's how life is. Life isn't neatly wrapped up in a little bow, and we, we shall see, won't we, to be continued. So... Scorpio, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a wonderful solar return for some of you and month for everyone. Bye.